So what are we looking for here, Lee? Looking for chanterelles, one of my favourite mushrooms, and, and a mushroom that has a really, really long season usually, or can do, depending on the right conditions. Um, and it's also one of the easiest to identify. Why is it you think that we're finding them in this depression or in this gully compared to on the woodland floor? So they can grow on the woodland floor, um, but this is probably one of their most typical kind of habitats is, is alongside um, ditches and banks. They don't always have to be full of water or hold water, but just that depression enough is enough usually to, to mean that, that that area holds a lot more water. Um, so they do prefer moister ground, they, they love moss. So Lee, would you say that you find chanterelles in the similar, well, in, in, the, in a similar location year after year? There is, there is a rule that with chanterelles, they form a symbiosis with certain trees. A symbiotic relationship? Yeah. So uh, it's an exchange of nutrients, etc. Um, but if you can find the tree that they're growing with, it's quite often that they will be growing with that every year. So what tree species, so it looks like we've got a beech tree here. In fact, there's lots of beech trees right here in this woodland. So would you say that this beech tree is hosting these mushrooms? Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, chanterelles is a classic uh, mushroom that, that forms a sy uh, symbiotic relationship with certain trees. Um, uh, so you're not guaranteed to find them in, in the same spot next year, but there's always a good chance that you will. Um, and the, you're, you're, you're quite often, you're always going to find beech trees in the woods, but you're not always going to find chanterelles unless you have the host tree. Beech is a classic, oak I find them with, and birch. Those are the three main ones for me um, that, that, that seem to hold chanterelles. Okay, brilliant. Last year, with my video that we did together, which was identifying wild forageable mushrooms in the UK, that is, there were quite a few people commenting, why are we ripping, why are we pulling the mushroom up by its roots and not cutting them or trimming them? Got anything to say to that, Lee? Yeah, I mean, like we were discussing earlier, I think it's, from, a, from a, an identification purpose, it's very important that you pull the mushroom so you can see all the way, all, the whole stem, etc. But it's also, um, you know, we, you know we, we've had a few comments where people are worried that we're, we're, it's quite an invasive way of picking and destructive um, and that we're actually destroying the mycelium or harming the mycelium in, in some way, which is just, you know, in my humble opinion, a complete myth. Um, you know, there's far more problems with uh, farming practices and the adding of fertilizers and chemicals and so on um, onto forest areas and spraying as well. Right, and so that's much that's more. Mu that's the really that's the, that's that's what's going to affect the mycelium. Right, okay, okay. You're never going to be able to harm the mycelium network. is vast. Um, and the mycelium that's that's just almost it looks like a, a cobweb network which is below yep. a few inches possibly below yep. the surface the leaves yep. on the surface and that is that is what the a lot of mushrooms thrive in or grow from exactly so um with chanterelles as they form a symbiosis with the trees those are usually located in and around the roots of a tree uh, other mushrooms that are saprophotic will be feeding on leaf litter or grass litter so in a field um, and those these can spread out in quite a large, vast area and form large rings, which is where you get the fairy rings. So we've just come across a, another species of mushroom. They're bright purple in colour. Beautiful looking, actually. One of my favourite mushrooms, not necessarily for the flavour, but just the, 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 the look, really. These are, these are more of a, a... They're a far prettier mushroom than taste. Um, that's for sure. But um, they often also... I, I seem to find these a lot when I find chanterelles because the chanterelles often uh, are, are, you know, are growing with and around beach uh, and these babies like it too. And they're tasty, are they? They're not the tastiest of mushrooms, but they're edible, um, and, but they look really good. So it, they're not a bad taste at all, but for, for flavour, you wouldn't rate them up there, but they look really cool next to chanterelles. Wow, lovely, lovely bit of colour there.
There's a few smaller ones here then. Yeah, so size of uh, chanterelle is kind of really down to yourself. Um, most restaurants and things like and prefer chanterelles to be about that sort of size. I love them. You kind of refer to as a girole at that sort of size. Um, if left after about a week to two weeks, they can grow usually almost double that depending on the condition so that uh, you know as long as it's wet enough and warm enough still okay. and then you can see there there's some really small ones what do you what do you, what did you just call those pins these are these are pins chanterelle pins so they're the early stages they must be what, yeah. a couple of days old if yeah yeah they've they've emerged over the last few days um a chanterelles is a relatively slow growing mushroom and and and, and after about two i'll probably come back in about two two weeks three weeks and that will be a pickable size so in two weeks, what do you say? It could be about this sort of size? Yeah, yeah, it should yeah. easily be that big, if yeah. not bigger, yeah. So Lee, we've just mentioned the winter chanterelle and the golden chanterelle, but are there any other species of chanterelle that we commonly find here in the UK? Yes, yeah, so they're, they're really... Well, in the UK, it's quite a large area because um, there are a few species in in uh, in Ireland and Scotland that we don't really get in England. Um, but it, but the, the kind of the main English species that we're really worrying about is um, the is the golden chanterelle, which are the ones we found today. There's a black trumpet chanterelle, which is one of my favourite mushrooms on earth. Um, and there's also uh, the winter chanterelle which again, we're looking for today, we hopefully find some of those. Um, and then the last one is, it's quite a rare one that we tend to find um, in only a few parts of, the, of, of England, uh, and that's the ashen chanterelle. And that's quite a rare species. I only ever see it once or twice a year, so it's not something we really pick. So we've just walked about 10 minutes, and we've now moved to an area in the woodland where there's birch trees, which are these white trees here you can see you see the the white bark on them as well as pine trees and lee has just found another species of mushroom this one is a scarlatina belite quite closely related to the sep um, but care is needed with this one because it can cause gastric upset or does cause gastric upset uh, if eaten raw and can cause gastric upset in some people. So uh, like with all mushrooms really, even seps, uh, it's always worth just trying a little bit first and then... A little bit at a time to see yeah. if or not yeah, yeah. they agree with your body. Yeah, it's always worth just being a little bit cautious first time. But I'm just gonna cut this mushroom just to show you one of its identifying... Oh, I know this one. Look at that. And then that changes color. From yellow to blue, so as soon it's as it's vivid. Cut, you can see Beautiful. that colour change straight away. Wow. It's amazing. But this has to be cooked. If you're going to eat it, it has to be fully cooked. Um, uh, and like I said, care is needed because one of my friends is now allergic to seps. Really? Because, yeah, two of my friends have, uh, are, are um oh, look at that. We've just given allergic. it, what, 20, 30 seconds? And look at the colour yeah. now. Amazing. Incredible. So your friend is now allergic to seps and is there a reason yeah, for that? Yeah, well, because of this. Because they both ate under undercooked well, they think they both ate undercooked scarlet scarlatina beliefs. Wow! And and now have an intolerance to seps, which is a bit of a shame. Wow! There's another type of um, beletus called a bay belete, uh, but we'll cover seps and beletes in another video. But uh, it's another fairly good edible. And now what we've come across are winter chanterelles, and before we pick them. You might be able to see them. In fact, you can just see how camouflaged they are when you're looking down, at especially this damp, wet day, looking at the wet leaves on the forest floor. But as you can probably see already, yes, they're in the middle of the screen and Lee is about to pick them. So there's one, two, there's like three there. Beautiful little things, aren't they? Lee, would you say that they've been eaten already by squirrels, or do no? You they're just they, they're just a funny one. They may have been they may have been eaten there by slugs. Oh yeah. Oh, and there as well. Yeah. So do we want these ones? Yes, please. Um, but they are they're a funny one. They do come up in quite odd shapes. So they do come up in quite weird shapes. You can see Lee's brought his dogs along today. Two little Jack Russells. Ashes. Ashes. And I've got my dog Amber right there. Okay. So would these have the same sort of lifespan 
when it comes to would you leave the smaller ones for these winter chanterelles and then come back later on for them to be bigger yeah like so definitely so we were discussing earlier how um uh golden chanterelles take a lot longer uh than than some other mushrooms to kind of to go from button or pin to to pickable uh these are another example these will can grow quite slowly um and they'll just slowly keep getting bigger you know, we're, we're, we're right at the beginning of the season for these, so they should last till January, February, March. Oh, is this a Rusula? Yeah, but it, and those are so... Uh, that one's a hot one, the spicy one again. Oh, is that the one that's a bit like horseradish? Yeah, it's really pokey. So these ones are brown birch belit. But unfortunately, as with quite a lot of specimens of this, mushroom they go over and are over here but these this mushroom tends to go over very quickly over you mean it's beyond it, it, it's past it, it's best best yeah exactly um you know uh, you you're really you're looking for a nice tight specimen of this but um they go over very quickly so if you were to pick those for the bag you want to eat them the same day um, but i prefer much prefer to dry these and eat them speaking of drying mushrooms how do you preserve mushrooms? What's, what, what is the best way for you? Do, you, do you? do you put them in a dehydrator? Do you put them in the oven to dry out? Yeah, so dehydrator by, by, by far is the most efficient way of, of preserving mushrooms. Are there any mushrooms that you, you wouldn't, any mushrooms that you pick in the UK, edible mushrooms that you wouldn't preserve or that don't preserve that well? Yeah, so, I mean, each mushroom really is different. Um, seps, I find the flavor of a sep is much, much better once it's been dried but the texture is completely different to how it was when it was fresh. Um, so there's two different uses for it. Um, saffron milk cap that we talked about earlier, that's one of my favorite ones to pickle because it's got a real crisp, okay. beautiful crunch to okay. it. They're really, really good. Um, I can imagine a lot, of, a lot of mushrooms going a bit sluggish, slimy sort of sluggish texture. They can. It's when, not, pi when pickled. Yeah. It's not something, that's why saffron is quite good probably for an English palate because it doesn't go quite as, as, as gooey. Um, something like this, if you tried to pickle that, it would be like eating a slug in a few months. Right, okay. And it's not really something uh, that, that that's, um, the English palate is used to. So we've now moved down. We aren't too far from a road. You might be able to hear a road in the background. But this really is a stunning woodland. There's all sorts of woodland paths here. And we've just come across, again, another winter chanterelle growing in amongst all this grass. That's a nice. That's a beauty. Nice one right there. That's what I preferred to have. These winter chanterelles are so camouflaged. If you look at that, it really blends in with the rest of the ground, with all those, those dark leaves. So I think you really need a, tra a good trained eye to find these. So just to show you how camouflaged these winter chanterelles are, you might or you might not be able to see the winter chanterelle in this shot. There it is, right there. So just next to these winter chanterelles, I found one of my other fa one of my other favourite mushrooms, which is a hedgehog. Um, it's quite easy to identify this one, um, as you can see this one has spines underneath it as opposed to gills or, sp or paws like a belit and they kind of come off like that. That's where it gets its name. These can grow in huge rings and actually... So there's more there, more under the more. dog and, and as we're walking along here there's a, a huge ring, almost a massive ring of these mushrooms. Some more here and here. And you can see sometimes they get really, really big. There you go. Oh, wow. All the way out. And it's well, just under ring, the dog. Just along here. And there. So it's a few, one whole ring. Massive. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to take these home. I'm going to eat these. I don't, I don't tend to find them very nice to dry. Uh, and they can be quite soggy to pickle. Um, so it's not really for my taste. I much prefer these fried off dry. I dry fry these. Dry them, okay. And then I, oh no, dry fry them. Uh, and then I put a little bit of butter in at the end because if you right. put oil in it before, to fry them with oil or butter, they can be really wet. Right, right.
Ooh, a nice little batch of golden chanterelles. As you can see, we've got a nice different selection of mushrooms. Do you want to briefly talk through what we have again? So we've got the brown birch belete there, which probably gonna I'm gonna put that into dry. We have a beautiful bay belete again for the dryer. Um, some wonderful hedgehog mushrooms, the golden shants or the golden shants uh, and the winter shants, and then my favourite colour colour combination, beautiful. the amethyst there with the um, with it as well. Well, that's about it for the, this video. I just want to say thank you very much for watching and a huge thanks to Lee. You're going to see him again soon. We're going to do some more videos. I think the next video we'll do will be a video similar to this, but looking for seps. Fingers crossed. And on that note, don't forget to give it a like and also check out Lee's Instagram. I'll put the link below and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.